हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत वर्मा जूनियर रेजिडेंट ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ रेडियो डायग्नोसिस जे एन मेडिकल कॉलेज अलीगढ़ माय टॉपिक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज केस प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन पटेल इनस्टेबिलिटी एटीन ईयर ओल्ड मेल प्रेजेंटेड विद कंप्लेंट ऑफ रिकरेंट डिसलोकेशन ऑफ राइट नी गैप फॉलोइंग द ट्रॉमा टू ईयर्स बैक and there is difficulty in squatting and sitting cross leg on inspection we can see there is a old healed scar mark of 1 to 2 cm over the right knee the patella dislocates while flexion of the right knee and reduces back on extension following the mal track that is a reverse j track and the critical angle was found to be 50 degree this is a plain radiograph apn lateral view Uh, showing the insal salvati index as a one point two and modified insal salvati index at one point six. Skylan Loren view depicting the sulcal angle as a one forty four degrees and later there is lateral uh, patellar displacement. And we can see there is a small vertically oriented medial patellar facets. So uh, it is a type three patella. Lateral patellar femoral angle was calculated as a 13.3 degrees and on uh, axial mr cuts uh, the trochlear facet ms asymmetry came out to be 49% patellar trochlear index is calculated on the sagittal mr images as came out to be 0.25 and uh, patellar height ratio was 1.66 and modified mr in sal sanvat index at 1.86 this all uh, suggest that there is a high riding patella that is uh, patella alta TTTG came out to be as twelve point seven, and lateral trochlear inclination and trochlear depth was came out to be as a four point three. Now the brief introduction about the patellar instability. Most patients are young and active individuals. High risk are women in the second decade. The prevalence is six to seventy seven per one lakh. Nearly half of all the patients uh, with the first time dislocation will sustain the further dislocation after initial conservative management. During the recovery period, the restrictive mobility and uh, two third of them report limitations in the strenuous activities. Chronic instability and recurrent dislocation may lead to progressive cartilage damage and severe arthritis if not treated adequately. MR imaging is highly sensitive for detecting capsular, ligamentous, cartilaginous, and bone injuries associated with patellar dislocation. MR has now replaced the diagnostic arthroscopic. as the primary diagnostic modality most important factors predisposing to the patellar instability include trochlear dysplasia patella alta excessive lateralization of the tibial tuberosity quantification of these anatomical uh, anomalies will help the ortho surgeon to choose the optimal treatment the aim of the surgery is twofold to repair the knee damage caused by the patellar dislocation and to correct those anomalies that are known to contribute to the future dislocations patellar dislocation is characterized by the complete loss of contact between the patellofemoral joint surfaces in almost all the cases the patellar dislocates laterally most common mechanism of the first time patellar dislocation is flex position of the knee with internal rotation on a planted foot with a valgus component in addition a traumatic component in the form of a mild to severe external force may be involved which results in disruption of the medial ligaments now the risk factors for the patellar instability and assessment with the mr imaging first comes uh, is a trochlear dysplasia it identifies a one of the main factor contributing to the chronic patellar femoral instability trochlear joint surface is flattened proximally and the concavity is less pronounced distally this combination results in considerable loss of the lateral patellar tracking and in the lateral dislocation of the patella in the at the initiation of the flexion the classic criteria for the diagnosing trochlear dysplasia are the crossing sign and double contour sign crossing sign is line represented by the deepest part of the trochlear groove crossing the anterior aspect of the condyle assessed from the lateral radiograph Double contour sign is double line at the anterior aspect of the condyle and is present if the medial condyle is hypoplastic. Dejour 
had proposed uh, the distinguishing four morphological types of the trochlear dysplasia. In the type A, the morphological structures are preserved, as we can see in the image A. And the type B, there is flat, horizontally oriented trochlear joint surface. In type C, there is flat and obliquely oriented trochlear joint surface with the facet asymmetry. In the type D, type D is the same as type C, but with a prominent bone protrusion on the parasagittal view, giving the cliff pattern. Now the Weber classification of patellar shape. So the, uh, it is uh, it describes mainly on the asymmetry between the patellar medial and lateral facets on the axial views of the patella, increasing number types indicating the larger degree of the asymmetry. So uh, in the type three, there is maximum asymmetry. In the type one, roughly symmetrical facets are there, and they are concave facets and equal sized. And although is it presumed as uh, as the ideal shape of the patella. It is in fact rather uncommon, occurring in 10% of the general population. The type 2 or B, the slightly smaller medial facet is there. And it is, uh, and the, there is a concave shaped uh, lateral facet. In the type 3 Weber, the markedly smaller facet of the medial facet and more vertically oriented. Quantitative method for diagnosing the trochlear dysplasia. Lateral trochlear inclination, most superior section showing the trochlear cartilage in selected from the axial data set, the inclination angle is less than 11 degrees indicating the trochlear mm -hmm. dysplasia. Lateral trochlear inclination assessed on the axial fat saturation uh, T2 MR imaging, a line drawn along the subchondral bone of the lateral uh, trochlear facet and the second line is drawn along the posterior aspect of the femoral condyles. And we measure the angle between them. If it, it is less than 11, there is trochlear dysplasia. Second comes here, a trochlear facet asymmetry. So here again, we uh, actually we measure uh, the length of the medial trochlear facet to the length of the uh, lateral trochlear facet ratio measured at the 3 centimeter above the tibio femoral joint cleft. A trochlear facet ratio of uh, less than 40% is identified indicating the dysplasia and with the sensitivity of the 100% and specificity of the 96%. The trochlear depth, the deepest point of the sulcus is determined at the same level as a trochlear facet asymmetry is determined. The trochlear dysplasia is assumed if the trochlear depth is 3 mm or less the sensitivity of the 100% and specificity of 96%. Let's uh, depict in the images. Uh, facet, we uh, measure the length of the medial facet and the lateral facet. Then we use the it, uh, to um, divide the medial facet length upon the uh, lateral facet length into 100%. If it is less than 40%, it, it, um, it indicates the dysplasia is there. And trochlear depth is measured by the first we draw a reference line, uh, which, is, <clears throat> which is at the posterior aspect of the femoral condyle at the three, again, the three centimeter above the uh, tibio femoral joint cleft. Then we draw uh, largest anterior posterior diameter of the lateral uh, and the medial condyle, like, like this uh, A and the C. And uh, then we uh, draw our deepest point of the sulcus and we mm, we use a formula of A plus C upon 2 minus B. That is, we take the mean of A and C and then uh, subtract it from the B. So if the trochlear depth is 3 mm or less, it assumed to be uh, indicating the dysplasia. Now patella alta or high riding patella. As we discussed, uh, if that patella is too high above the trochlear fossa and occurs when uh, uh, the patella tendon is too long. With patella alta, the degree of the flexion needs to be higher for the patella to engage in the trochlea compared with the normal knee. This problem leads to the reduced patellar contact area and decreased bone stability in the shallow degrees of flexion. Patellar height ratio is calculated as the length of the patellar tendon measured posteriorly from the apex of the patella to its attachment to the tibial tuberosity. 
divided by the longest superior inferior diameter of the patella, that is insal salvati index, the normal patella height ratio is reported as a 1.1 with a standard deviation of 0.1 and patella alta is defined as the patella height ratio of more than 1.3, which is the normal ratio plus the two standard deviation. The patella trochlear index has recently been proposed as the more accurate reflection of the functional height of the patella. The, in this index is a measure of patellar femoral contact area determined from the sagittal MR images. Here in the sagittal MR image, we can see how, how we measure the patellar height ratio or insert salvati index. We take the uh, longest superior inferior diameter of the patella and, and we measure the uh, length or patellar tendon, then we use uh, a up, we use a formula A upon V, that is the patellar, uh, length of the patellar tendon and the um, uh, longest diameter of the superior inferior diameter of the patella. If uh, normal as we can uh, discuss, the normal has uh, value 1.1 with the standard deviation of 0.1 and if it is more than 1.3, then we uh, take in as, as the patella all down. Now, Last comes here, TTTG. Uh, we, me uh, we measure a distance from the TVL tubercle to the trochlear group on the axial fast, fast T2 MR imaging. The distance uh, from the deepest point of the trochlea, that is a line B, is uh, drawn. And uh, to the middle of the TVL tubercle, we measure the distance between them. If the uh, this, this distance is less than 15 mm, it is considered as normal. If the distance is 15 to 20 mm, it's considered it's coming up to be borderline and distance of more than 20 mm indicate the marked lateralization of the tuberosity. Now the repair techniques are MPFL reconstruction, medial capsular plication, and lateral capsular release, trochloplasty, and tibial tuberosity transfers. Now coming back to our case, the border and there is borderline trochlear dysplasia with a sulcal angle of 144 degrees and trochlear depth is 1.4.3 uh, and TTTG came out 12.7 with asymmetrical trochlear facets. So, so it came out to 49%. Uh, there is patella alta as we have uh, discussed and Weber type 3 patella. So considering all these things, the MPFL this reconstruction uh, was done using a semi-tendinosis graft. Thank you.